Hey everybody, welcome to another Fun in 5. Today I'm bringing you Survive, Escape from Atlantis. This is by Stronghold Games. It's been around, this is the 30th anniversary edition, uh, recently acquired by our family. And just wanted to talk about a few things that I like about the game after giving it a whirl. Uh, first off, the premise of the game, it's early in the 20th century, a time of exploration and adventure. The mysterious island of Atlantis has been discovered in the middle of the ocean. And there are rumor of riches. And basically, we are adventurers. We found some riches, and now we're trying to escape before Atlantis sinks. Um, and you might think, well, maybe that's a co-op game because you're all trying to get off the island. But the game is not a co-op game, in a way. So let's talk about five things I like about it. First thing is the fact that the game uh, looks like it should be a co-op, like I said. But you're actually, it's a free-for-all. It's a very much a take-that co-op game. You're all trying to do the same thing. You're trying to get off this island. Uh, I'll show you the visual, but you're trying to get to the four corners where there's uh, land, dry land, that's not going to sink into the ocean like this island of Atlantis is going to. And so um, you think you would work together to do that, but really you're going to end up sabotaging each other. You're going to sabotage, sabotage each other by sending sharks out once they appear. Uh, you can send sharks closer to your opponents instead of near you. You can send whales near their ships. You can send these uh, big sea serpents over. And so throughout the game, you're constantly trying to get your guys off the island onto a ship and then off to the corners while simultaneously sabotaging your opponents. So interesting premise there. I like that part of the game that it, it's, um, it appears like a co-op, but it is a take that, but it's a fun Interesting take that. You want to come up, Jasper? Come on up. Sarah? Jasper is going to escape Atlantis. Ooh, yeah. Okay. We're going to keep her in because she's so cute. All right. Second thing is um, each of you has a group of survivors. You have these little meeples. Um, and uh, one of the interesting things about these meeples is on the bottom of them is a value. And that's how many uh, survivors there are, how many people they're worth. And so it goes from six, five, four, three, two, and one. And you have um, more ones and twos than you do uh, sixes and fives. Uh, you might only have one, six, and five. But you put all those on the island. You take turns putting them on the island without showing your opponents what values you're putting where. So maybe you're going to put your one first. Maybe you're going to put your six first. Who knows? Nobody else knows but you. But you have to remember where you put those because uh, after they're played, you're never allowed to look at the bottoms again, even when they're removed from the board. It's not until the game ends and you do scoring to find out who had the highest values that escaped from the island. And I think that's a really neat mechanism that you can, um, it, it's got a little bit of memory involved, a little bit of planning if you want to place them close to the edge of the island and get them off first, or if you want to put them near the middle of the island and take them off last, hoping that um, a lot of the, you might have some protection cards or tiles by then. So that it's a neat mechanism that the hidden elements of your meeples, the hidden values, adds a level of strategy to the game that you might not expect in a game that looks like this. The third thing I like is disappearing terrain mechanism. So as Atlantis sinks, you're going to find the first the desert tile sink. They're the lowest to the water. Um, for, the forests are higher, the mountains are even higher. So these are going to sink first. They're going to actually come off the board. And when they come off, they could trigger something appearing, whether it's a boat or a shark or a whale or a serpent moving. Um, or it could be a tile that gives you protection or gives you the chance to move one of those creatures. So the tile will do a dual purpose, uh, I guess triple purpose. Uh, the first purpose is putting your guys on it. Second purpose is that you get to remove them. And you get to choose which ones you remove as long as deserts are first and forests are second. So you can remove the ones under your opponent's meeples and make them sitting in the water so it's harder for them to escape. But also you get benefits out of those. But then it goes to the forest and then it goes to the mountains before the whole island explodes and you have to be off of it. So I like how, how that mechanism works, how you see your board literally disappearing before your eyes, your, your survivors getting stranded in the water and trying desperately to get to the island. It's very, very thematic and fun as it plays out. Um, the fourth thing I like is the special meeples. I'm always a sucker for special components. Uh, this game is no exception, so you'll see that there are very cool looking whale meeples, nice big sea serpent meeples, there are little shark fin meeples, and of course the people meeples themselves with the special numbers on the bottom. So a very visually looking game, and then you have the little wooden ships that hold three characters as well. 
So a nice little board. The tiles are three thicknesses, so they're chunky. So overall, really love the components. Meeple stand out the most to me because it um, just looks really cool on the table. You can get some nice photos for Instagram and or share on your Facebook and, and just have fun playing and looking at what's happening on the board there. So that's pretty cool. And then the fifth thing I like is that the end game is always a surprise. So you know that the game is not going to end until you get to the mountains, but you don't know what turn the game is going to end. So on the bottom of one of these mountains tiles, we'll just flip over till we see it. There's a volcanic tile. And as soon as that mountain is flipped, the game is over. doesn't matter if there's four more mountains or six more mountains or if it's a last mountain, just is game over. So any survivors left uh, on the last few mountains or floating in the water, they're just dead. They didn't make it. But any survivors that are on the outlying islands in the four corners, that's where you tally up the points. And so each player would flip over their tokens. They'd uh, calculate the value of their me meeples, the people that they saved, and whoever has the most wins the game. And I thought that's a neat, neat way, just kind of, you don't know if the game's going to end until it's over, and you might have been waiting to get your best meeple from your memory out to the corner and didn't quite make it, or maybe you just did, and you're able to tell a story about the game. But there you have it. Those are things I like the most about Survive Escape from Atlantis. And it does have a couple different game modes I can throw up on the screen there as well. Uh, so if you're playing with some younger ones and you don't want to go with that memory uh, numerical value, you could just say a meeple is a meeple, the numbers don't matter. So just whoever has the most people off at the end of the game wins. There's, or there, there's a, a version you can play where you play until the last tile's gone. Um, or uh, until uh, whatever, there's a couple different rules in there. So nice to have some variation at the end as well. Uh, if you've played the game or if this video was interesting to you, leave a comment. Otherwise, like, subscribe, do whatever you want. Thanks as always for watching and have a great day.